Well, welcome back to AP World History Modern. Today we're going to begin our first day on Unit 4, Transoceanic Interactions. Uh, so that's our first day of Unit 4.1. Right, and we're going to be looking at how cross-cultural interactions resulted in the diffusion of technology and facilitated changes in patterns of trade and travel. All right. So uh, these are our standards. And uh, so over the next couple of days, we'll be we'll be looking at technology and technological innovations diffused into Europe, and specifically, and and how that facilitated. Uh, the creation of new new empires, right? Trade empires, uh, trade post empires, and actual like, colonial empires. All right. So for today's daily five um, in class, we we completed uh, or we we wrote a thesis, right? A claim. And so here's the prompt: In the period from 1450 to 1750, the development and in interactions of belief systems often had political, social, and cultural implications. Develop an argument that evaluates the extent to which belief systems affected at least two land-based states in Asia or Europe differently in this period. All right, so in class, um, I gave students about five to seven minutes to come up with a single uh, claim, right? a single uh, thesis sentence for this. Um, and then we went over them as a as a class, and then I graded them. All right, so so make sure you you do complete this. Uh, just as a reminder for those of you who are doing this, I'm just gonna show you exactly what I showed students in class today. All right, so I'm looking for a single claim, right, a single claim or thesis right, sentence. Right, so a single claim or a single thesis sentence, and which means um, you don't technically have to address more than one land-based state for the purposes of this activity. You are more than welcome to. Uh, most students do, uh, at least who successfully earn credit for this, uh, but you don't have to technically because I am, you know, you obviously, uh, you know, your, your, your thesis might be three to five sentences long, um, you know, and I'm just looking for a single, single thesis sentence, um, you know, and what I'm looking for is looking for you to have, let me zoom in on this, just so you can make sure you see it. All right, I'm looking for a category of analysis. We're looking for a clear category of analysis plus skill application. All right, skill application. And just to remind you what the uh, what the words AP stand for in this class, right? Uh, AP equals answer answer the prompt. So whatever you put, uh, whatever your category of analysis is, make sure you are actually answering the prompt. Um, and of course, this is where kind of skill application comes in as well. Your skill application has to be answering, answering the prompt. Uh, just as a reminder, if you uh, do not remember for whatever reason what a category of analysis is, Right. A category of analysis is one level of specificity below a theme and one level of specificity above a fact. All right, and above a fact. So right in the middle, in the middle there. So I shouldn't be seeing the words political, social, or cultural in your right, in your uh, thesis. Those are theme words. I don't want to see theme words in your thesis. And while you are welcome to regurgitate the, the prompt that you have here, regurgitating the prompt never earns points. So make sure you uh, make sure you give me a clear example of a category of analysis that addresses the topic of the prompt 
right? And, and I'm going to want to see scale application. So about one sentence, and you're welcome to either email that in, or you can, or you can uh, bring it in when you come back. All right, and hit it in person. All right, so uh, moving on. All right, so today we're going to be going over just kind of basics um, about what Unit Four is about, and uh, and also start thinking about essay writing and for real, and you know, and uh, you know, kind of getting into the whole, how do you earn complexity points and the such. So, but yeah, so as we begin unit four, uh, this is the exact same time period, 1450 to 1750, that we just finished up with our land-based empires. So now we're getting into the transoceanic empires and all the major players are still there. Now we're just kind of looking at them less from uh, how did they expand and how do they administer their empires with how do they now interact with you know, with uh, other other states, um, and of course, there's some new states that we need to turn our attention to that are not land based, right? So, you know, these are these are foreign colonial empires, or or trade post empires. Um, as a general rule, this uh, you know, I always kind of like to say that this, you know, that this uh, this unit is kind of the beginning of easier times for many of you because you're familiar. You've got some contextual knowledge of, you know, of what it is you are, we're looking at here. And, uh, and for many, that is true, right? So many of you, uh, you know, have heard of Prince Henry the Navigator or Bartholomew Diaz. Um, let me kind of zoom in on this a little bit. Um, Columbus or Cabot or Vasco da Gama, Cortez, Magellan, Pizarro. Now, many many of you have heard of them before, and you're kind of familiar with that story um, and how all that you know, how all that kind of interacts with each other. And that, and of course, that if that's the case, then you know then then you definitely have a leg up. Um, you know, when it comes to this unit, right? You're not learning about things like Zamanders for the first time. You know, you're learning about Magellan, who you might be familiar with. Now, you may not be familiar with them, and then what I just said does not really apply, but but for most students, they at least have some contextual knowledge about the information we're about to cover with Unit 4, and that, generally speaking, is true for the rest of the course. So hopefully you find uh, you find the rest of what we talk about from this point on a little, a little easier. All right, so here's our time grid. So hopefully a lot of this on here should be familiar since we just finished Unit 3, and we covered a very large percentage of, of the information on here. So hopefully this is familiar to you. Please pause and, and have a look. Um, so yes, there's actually not a lot of specifics that we haven't already covered. All right, one other thing that we are going to begin looking at in this unit is, is uh, joint stock companies and the rise of, of a new economic system. Um, you, know, initially, you know, initially we think of mercantilism and mercantilism is going to be a part you know, of this, but eventually this is going to evolve into a different form of economics that eventually becomes known as capitalism. Right? So the rise of the joint stock companies. And once again, many of you are familiar with a couple of these. Most of you have heard of the Hudson Bay Company from elementary school, Massachusetts Bay Company, or the Virginia Company. So a couple of these are familiar. And if you are familiar with these, then you, you know, maybe you've learned a little bit about how they work. Right? So, you know, the, the spreading around of risk, um, you know, through, you know, th through the sales of shares, um, you know. And, uh, and, you, and you know that these are part of the story of, of these colonies. All right. All right. So let's uh, let's begin. Right? And of course, we're talking about initially uh, Portuguese Brazil and the Euro time, European maritime trade. So we're going to begin with uh, we're going to begin by creating a graphic organizer. All right. So if you want to kind of pause it on this and create this, or I'm going to I'm just going to do the same here um, with mine. All right. So we're going to begin by just kind of breaking this down. Contextualization, secondary causes. All right, so let's just kind of, all right. So contextualization. Let me zoom out so you can see what I'm writing. T-U-A-L-I-Z-A-T-I-O-N. All right, contextualization. And C 
secondary causes. All right, and then over on the far right over here. We have events. All right, so what is it that we're actually, you know, kind of talking about here? We're talking about, right, with the beginning of this unit, um, the rise of Portuguese, right, the rise of Portuguese um, and the Spanish right, empires were able to develop trade empires and colonial empires. All right, little parentheses on that. All right, I'm going to zoom in on this and you know, I mean, I think we're going to break this down okay, but let's just kind of break this down by in the case of the Portuguese trade post empire. Right, trade post empire, and in the case of the Spanish, we're going to largely talking about uh, colonization. Of Latin America. All right, so these are the events that we're talking about. Right, that we're talking about the rise of the Portuguese and the Spanish empires during the period, and I guess I probably need to put this on here 1450 through 1750. All right, we're talking about the rise of the Portuguese and the Spanish empires. Can we come up with some of the major causes of this, specifically a primary cause? All right, primary cause. All right, we do that a few times. Another primary cause. And the third one, primary cause. All right. So I'm going to pull this, pull this off here, all right, to kind of show you just the general chart. Um, so we're going to save the arrows for later, obviously, but just as I uh, make sure you understand what these words mean, um, contextualization, right? Make sure, uh, you know, contextualization is the big picture process, either globally or, or locally. So what stuff is going on um, around, the, or, you know, around, around the 1400s? That will, you know, that will contribute to the rise of the Portuguese, um, you know, in the Spanish empires. Like, what is going on that is that is connected that helps us make sense of what the Portuguese and the Spanish are about today, um, right? And then, of course, what are the secondary causes? You know, indirect events, right? Events that don't have to happen, um, you know, did not have to happen because of these causes, you know. So. You know, these are things that are going on that contributed to the rise of the uh, of the trade post empire, but were they really a, a, a direct cause, right? So secondary causes, uh, and then of course, what are the primary causes? These are things that are directly connected to, you know, to the event that we're that we're talking about. So as you go through your homework uh, for tonight, now with your reading, be thinking about, you know. Is what you're reading about a direct cause or uh, a primary cause or a secondary cause? You know, so kind of be thinking along those lines, trying to, you know, trying to get a better, better understanding. Now, one of the reasons why we differentiate like this is, you know, when we start talking about writing essays, um, you know, there's, you know, there are ways in which uh, students who earn fours and fives are distinguished from students who earn threes right or lower you know students students who earn twos and threes are are able to look at an event and give some causes um you know provide some evidence right directly related to, uh, to an event 
all right, or, or to a topic. Uh, whereas students who earn fours and fives are able to provide a nuanced or uh, are able to demonstrate a nuanced understanding which differentiates between primary and secondary. Or as we were talking about the, uh, the other day in, in class with the Harkness, uh, when looking at the effects of silver on, on the Ming Dynasty, what were some of the short-term implications versus the long-term impacts of silverization? Um, you know, students who are able to demonstrate that level of nuance, right, primary versus secondary, short-term versus long-term, those are ways to, you know, to demonstrate complex understanding of a topic. So if you ever, you, you, when you start talking about earning complexity point, that's, this is one of the ways in which you would demonstrate complex understanding of a topic, right? So are your goal is to get a four or five on the AP exam, or is your goal to get a two or a three on the AP exam? You know, and, and that's how you need to start thinking about the information that you, that you read, right, as, as you come across this, as you're going to be doing tonight for your homework. All right. So just, uh, just a little help on, on contextualization with this, right? What's going on in the world before the, the Portuguese moment begins and the Spanish merchant begins, right? So, so this is looking at the source of where most of the, the spices that Europeans desired, right? Specifically around here, um, right? And this is, this is simply an infographic, right? That you can use to... To, to gain information, all right? Uh, and here's another, here's another bit of information, all right? Another little infographic that you can use to help think about contextualization, all right? All right, so that is, that is all for today, and then tomorrow we'll, we'll go through and build this chart. All right, so that's the key takeaways. European maritime expansion is more than just Columbus, all right, which we haven't even talked about him. Um, they really start with the Crusades and the rise of Italian merchants, right? Prince Henry the Navigator, the accumulation of knowledge and technology into a single location in Sangra, which, uh, which in class we did watch a couple of the videos, and I'll show you where they are in just a second. Um, you know, the sponsorship of expeditions, and make sure you're differentiating between primary and secondary, right, when it comes to comes to events. All right. So in class today, we watched, uh, I mean, really dependent on which class. So I actually showed different videos in different classes. Um, so, but we did look at, I think we looked at this one here, uh, the Nazare of Portugal video. So some classes watch that. Some of the classes watch the Diaz video. And I don't know, maybe one watched the Magellan video. Um, but we watched these to kind of get a little basic contextual contextual understanding of what was going on um, and the map videos are excellent as well if, uh, if you want to watch if you want to spend a little bit of time and watch that um, but those are going to be kind of at the heart of being able to contextualize um, on this chart all right that is uh so that is all for today that is all for today sapriati